Okay, okay, I'm going to finally address it. It's been a long time coming, but I can't stay silent on it anymore. Too many of you have been asking for my opinion. Is the 1975's Maddie Healy a dirtbag dreamboat or just another problematic white dude who needs to shut up and amplify marginalised voices? Well, I think the problem with that question is it's just so binary when in fact two things can be true at the same time. Maddie Healy can have his heart in the right place, but like any cishet white dude bro can also do things that are really insensitive and rip through the hearts of our most marginalised communities. But as you know, I'm not interested in performative activism. Cancelling people doesn't create change. Change comes from constructive conversations. What I think needs to be done is Maddie needs to be sat down by someone from these marginalised communities and they need to say, listen, Maddie, we know your heart is in the right place and you don't mean to hurt so many people, but as a member of a community you've hurt so deeply through your actions over the years. As a person with ears, I gotta say, your son stink. Anyway, since I'm already having a go at anemic twinks, why are the Greens blocking a $10 billion fund for public housing? Sorry, just got out of the shower. Lismore, I'm coming to your town tomorrow. And Sydney, I'm coming a few days afterwards. Get your tickets. Links in the description. Don't you think Matty Healy looks like a Greens MP? And you can't get angry at me for addressing this. We did a poll on my Patreon on what my patrons wanted me to make a video on. And the top result was the Greens wedged Labor. If you want me to make a video on why Adam Bant is the true king of the manosphere, join my Patreon and vote for it. Look, I'm that cheap. If enough of you vote for it, an entire video could be this. You said in the speech that uh, wages growth wasn't going uh, particularly well. What's the current WPI? Google it, mate. Look, all I'm saying is the future of the Greens depends on you joining my Patreon. I'll fix their entire messaging. No longer will they be the soy boy party with that classic pastel millennial graphic designer chic. They will be the badass Manosphere Predator Philosopher Party. Max Chandler Mather, their housing spokesperson, will no longer dress like me, an autistic 10 year old on an excursion to the aquarium. We will use the Patreon money to buy him a robe and one of those watches that looks like a Hot Wheels car. That way, he can actually maintain the youth vote. But alas, for now, we're stuck with the hosts of Chapo Shithouse podcast basically running the Greens messaging. Before we really get into why the Greens are blocking the housing fund, just watch a clip from Tom Ballard's unofficial Greens podcast, Serious, Serious Danger. Danger, with Greens housing spokesperson Max Chandler Mather. This is so you get an understanding of the level of genuine revolutionary fervor Labor are up against. Because Albanese's been there since 1996, right? Like, so if you've been there for most of his life, he doesn't have the same perspective as sort of the fresh eyes that you come into this place thinking about how cooked this is. I assume that he thinks, oh, the system works pretty well. We just got to do it in the right sort of labor way, you know? Yeah, that's right. I'm not sure what he thinks, to be honest. But um, I, that seems like a kind reading. I, I don't think they think... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, you're right. He's a dumb cunt. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry to steal your material, Jess. <laughs> uh, you can have that. No problem. <laughs> okay, first. How long has your podcast been going? Over a year and a half and you still haven't hit a thousand subs. And you think the Greens have this mandate to govern. The idea that a coked up ex-radio host knows more about power and public policy than a VB'd up career politician. It really should show you the level of undergrad hubris infesting the current crop of Greens. To explain why Albanese's actions in office aren't line by line Greens policy by saying, oh, he's, he's a, a dumb, dumb really undermines the credibility of anything else said on this podcast. You're either just extremely dishonest or you're just a dumb cunt. I mean, I have a lot to say about John Howard, but he wasn't a dumb cunt who just couldn't comprehend the complexity and ingenuity of Labor's vision. It was the same with Malcolm Turnbull, Dom Perrottet, John Bar Well, no, nah, actually he is a dumb cunt. At the same time, you have Max Chandler Mather whinging about civility and personal attacks like he's fucking Nancy Pelosi, but sit there whilst his drugo friends insult our Prime Minister. And I think in their like comms adult brains, his whinging is especially dumb with the personal attack that was oh, so bad was this. The Green spokesperson on housing, the Green spokesperson on housing, let me talk to you about the Green spokesperson on housing. You know, he's had a taste of the media spotlights. 
He's had a taste of the media spotlight. Your spokesperson on housing is now prioritising media t attention from stunts and obstruction over housing for, for women and kids fleeing domestic violence. How shameful. I mean, I'm fine with Max Chandler May for making stupid attacks on far more impressive people than himself. I have an entire podcast where I do exactly that week after week. But I don't simultaneously play the victim and whinge about personal attacks existing while making personal attacks. That would be like Matty Healy taking a stand against saying shit that makes his skin crawl. It would ring hollow. Which, speaking of, I just have to show you this Matty Healy quote. It's too fucking good. Sex is just a le love letter to kind of every prudish 17-year-old girl, you know? Everyone's been there with that kind of indecisive, flirty girl who just can't make her mind up. Anyway, I actually should get into some details on the housing stash rather than just 10 minutes of aesthetic critiques of the Greens of the 1975, but it's just so much more fun. Another thing... No, I'm going to do one more, come on. What is wrong with Maddie Healy's accent? Sacré B. Okay, sorry, look, anyway, um, what <laughs> Labor proposing is a 10... I told you it was more fun. A $10 billion fund called the Housing Australia Future Fund. The fund is a bit like a sovereign wealth fund. $10 billion is invested. Then the returns of the fund are spent on building social and affordable housing. It's set to build 30,000 homes over the next five years. When Labor entered office with Kevin Rudd, there was around 378,000 social housing dwellings. And then when Labor left office, that number had increased to over 408,000. Then, from the coalition entering office from 2013 to 2020, do you know what that number increased to? 420? Yeah! No, nah, it was 416,190 or some shit. That means that for their first seven years in office, the coalition were building less than 1,100 new dwellings a year. Labor's new fund could build up to 6,000 new dwellings a year. That is a massive increase. The fund is pretty clever because it's designed to ingrain an ongoing source of funding for social housing that sustains itself even when the Liberals are in office, as it's operating independently of the budget. Meaning that if the fund passes, it's designed to become a sustained source of housing funding that the Liberals will have little or no incentive to destroy. Look at this graph. That is exactly why the fund is needed. And this is also exactly why it's insanely dishonest for the Greens to even mildly equate Labor with the Liberals. The problem with affordable housing in this country is that it's pretty much only built when Labor's in office. So Labor's fixing that. Finally, this is the Greens' main gripe with the fund. That it's a fund. That it takes advantage of the reality that Australia is a Western country with a market economy. Oh, I'm sorry. If only the Greens won more seats last election, we could have nationalised everything by now. Ended neoliberalism, whatever the fuck that means. Ended market economy. Ended racism. Ended toxic masculinity. And every problem in Australia would be fixed. Yeah, it's a really realistic platform because we're not promising to end ironic racism, the kind that like Maddie Healy engages in. That's a really complicated problem that we just can't look to end in one term. The Greens are kicking up a stink that Labor aren't just making one-off investments in housing. Oh wait, sorry, Labor are doing that. As Pettywog noted in the Senate, the bill the Greens are blocking also includes $2 billion in financing support for social and affordable rental homes, $350 million to build a further 10,000 affordable homes through the Housing Accord, allowing the National Housing and Infrastructure Facility to invest in social and affordable housing, opening up a potential $575 million in funding, a 15% increase in Commonwealth rent assistance, the largest increase in over 30 years. But let's pretend this fund is the only thing the Labor Party is doing like the Greens want you to believe for a second. The Greens are pretty much pissed off that Labor has reckoned with the reality that they're not in power most of the time. And when Labor aren't in power, the Liberals certainly don't put money into housing. So there needs to be a long-term fix to that. I'm sorry that the long-term fix isn't a revolutionary vanguard of Redditors who will establish a new constitution. Yes, and amendments won't be called amendments, they'll be called um actually. The first um actually of the new constitution, um actually, there should be a right for everyone to have access to sex workers because dopamine is a human right. Weekly peggings will now be covered by Medicare. Like listen, this is their critique of the scheme. Actually, even Rudd did that and I'm not a huge fan of him, but like in the last Labor government, they spent $5 billion and built a bunch of social housing. Uh, and it really is that simple. Um, obviously theirs isn't though. Yes, So, and the thinking behind it is by putting a $10 billion uh, housing fund, that's budget neutral, right? So we still, the government still has the $10 billion, so they haven't actually spent the $10 billion. They've used the $10 billion to, in theory, generate more revenue to then 
kind of spend even not on houses. It's an entirely <laughs> an accounting trick. So, yeah, exactly. So, basically, uh, the effect on the budget is just paying the interest of them taking out a $10 billion loan. Uh, and then what they the budget, it won't look like they've spent $10 billion because, yes, the $10 billion is an asset that the government get to hold on to. It is literally just so they don't have to... On the one side, they can say in the budget, look, we're not spending that much on housing. And then in the public, they can say, look, we're spending lots on housing. Why are you getting upset? It's like a way to gaslight the entire election. Um, Maybe it was a mistake to vote for a party that views dealings in government like arguments in a polyamorous relationship. Labor are fucking gaslighting us. And did you see Jackie Lambie? She's like more into Labor now. So fucking fake. Let's go to Labor to teach them a lesson. The other thing the Greens like to say is, oh, you don't know if it'll build houses because what if the fund loses money because the existing future fund went down 1.2% last year? Yeah, well, uh, for one, they're using an outlier year to make that argument and I can't believe it, but I'm gonna defend Peter Costello, the chairman of the existing future fund, who pointed out that a 1.2% decline is pretty good when globally stocks and bonds were down 10%. Jesus, you only have to look at any Hustler infographic Instagram page to know that the market goes up in the long term. Since its inception, the Future Fund's annualised return is 7.6%, and the year before the 1.2% decline, the Future Fund went up 22%. You can have a look at every year's return right here. It's pretty clear how much of a lie this line the Greens peddle is of. We don't even know if houses will be built because what if the fund loses money? The West's entire foreign, monetary and social policy is designed to ensure that over the long term, number go up. And Labor are taking advantage of this to ensure a continued source of funding for housing victims of domestic violence. But yes, some years, no, we go down. Down. That's why the fund is not the only part of Labor's housing bill, but it's also why it's good because most years there's a party in power that gives nothing to build social housing. Now, all this being said, do I think Labor should do more to address the housing crisis? Yes. The unions, Jackie Lambie and other crossbenchers also think that, but they're not blocking what's proposed and misrepresenting Labor's proposals to further their careers. I think even Labor thinks it should do more. You know who doesn't though? The majority of Australians, apparently. Labor lost two elections proposing reform to negative gearing and capital gains tax concessions. I made a video earlier this year on why those two reforms would have greatly improved housing affordability. But Australians, with a little help from the press, rejected Labor in those two elections, with those policies being a major factor in that rejection. So Labor dropped them in 2022 and won. Now, do I like the fact that we live in a country where the press, property peak bodies, developers and the coalition control public policy to that great extent? No, I've had my house burnt down because I can't shut up about this shit. But I recognise that reality. And to actually achieve outcomes in Australia, you have to work within reality. Who really thinks this is a good tactic? Demanding of Labor, break your promises. Otherwise, we will block the measures you actually have a mandate for that will address the housing crisis. Measures, mind you, that aren't a cap. They've said it a million times. Measures that are just the beginning. So in essence, it's the Greens voting against Labor's bill because why? They're annoyed that they don't get to administer the solution? This is what I don't get about the Greens platform. Half of it is how very powerful interests control the country. The other half is going, oh, why hasn't Labor nationalised Adani and replaced the CEO with a drag queen who can also double as our defence minister and tell the Americans to fuck off and then we can cut defence spending and do what really matters, invest in mental health comedy nights. It would be so easy to do. After all, everything's possible in a parliamentary democracy. All you have to do is vote Greens. I guess that's the sell. For Greens to succeed, Labor has to appear to fail. But are you really naive enough to think that even if the most improbable thing happened in the Greens' one office, it would last longer than a term? With all the vested interests against it and the party of Redditors would resist the forces that permeate and influence all Western governments and govern more effectively than Labor. The fact that their best tactic on this housing bill is not negotiating to quote the Twitch streamers their voters watch way too much in good faith and actually achieving positive outcomes like the other crossbenchers have done, but holding it hostage and lying about Labor being as bad as the Liberals, that really should tell you everything you need to know. They can't even manage their own comms. Guys, lay off using the word cooked. The final cook thing, and there's a lot of cook things here. It's really weird. 
are you Triple J hosts from 2013? And, oh, wait, you are. Anyway, there you go, Patreon. Sign up today to suggest my next topic, but that's my view on the Greens wedging Labor. Same as my view on Maddie Healy. Fucking sexy. sexy.